good afternoon and thank you for joining me yes again in Itoro's hub it's so good to have you here with me in the hub and yes today we'll be talking about um life after sport what are athletes supposed to do after their life in sport now we'll be looking critically at um the uh, lifestyle after uh, professional um um, activities as an athlete. We're going to be looking at, you know, um, how to fight depression and remain relevant as an athlete. Now, this has been a very, very, very sensitive topic over the years because we've had athletes who have actually fallen into depression over the years. We've had athletes who have actually committed suicide because they couldn't deal with life after, because they couldn't deal with life after they actually fell, actually, actually, after they come out of their professional career. And so many people have been trying to, you know, water down these activities over here in this part because they feel lots of people are not talking about it. This is a conversation that ought to be, you know, had. So today I decided that today we are going to be talking about this because a whole lot of people don't talk about um, the challenges that athletes tend to they'll be shamed sometimes because they feel they'll be seen as a weakling but today we are going to be talking about this topic and don't forget you can always drop your comments you can always you know send in your um questions as we'll be taking them as we go along and my guest is um my guest of course you know i don't do this all by myself my guest is an ex-international and he has a, um, a UEFA license, um, he has a UEFA Pro license. Also, he's got a certificate in sports administration and always, always, always ready to always give us um, something to talk about, especially when it, is, it has to do with graph um, roots sports. He's also a La Liga ambassador. I'm talking um, about no other person, um, but Mr. Mutu Adekoju. It's good to have you on the show today, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doro. Uh, it's my pleasure being with you. Um, uh, and uh, um, I'm, I mean, delighted to talk about I mean, this uh, uh, topic. Yeah. So um, there's a saying, let's go straight into the topic, sir. So there's a saying that a sportsman dies twice. Now, the first time when he's, you know, gone into retirement, and that is, um, you know, because the buzz around um, the whole activities in the life of a sportsman and the whole um, adrenaline rush, the competition, the excitement and everything, all that just, you know, just comes to an end. The moment the life, the, the, they go into retirement now, why is it that some athletes actually, you know, find this easy, you know, to go into retirement? Why some others struggle along the line? Why is it that? Why is it like that? Well, uh, firstly, I mean, let me just let me tell you that I mean, sports is life, and uh, I was involved in football. I was I mean, a professional footballer for so many years, and I mean, I can tell you that I mean, football, I mean, is life. Um, ever since I graduated, uh, well, even when I was in school, I started playing football very, very young and all that. So imagine something that you are used to from when you are in primary school, secondary school, then I mean, you I mean, get to be a professional and I mean, you are I mean, playing professional football for so many years and all of a sudden, because of age, because of injury and all that, you have to drop out and I mean, be in the back seat. And uh, I mean, it's I mean, very, very difficult. And I mean, uh, it's I mean, expected that anybody that is doing a certain thing for a long period that is used to cherish it and I mean, love it, and I mean, he's being paid for it. And all of a sudden, you get into retirement, and I mean, which is I mean, normal. Uh, it's I mean, always very, very, very difficult to, to accept that. And that is why uh, uh, people who that are not prepared get into depression. Yeah, um, I think uh, <laughs> it's I mean, uh, always normal, but the only thing that I mean, one can do is just I mean, to try and I mean, get yourself ready. And I mean, which I think I mean, we're going to be talking about I mean, as I mean, the, 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 the minutes I mean, go on. 
Okay, so what was it like for you, you know, when you retired? How did you, you know, go into retirement? How, did, how was it for you? Was it really stressful? Can you take us, you know, down that memory? It was, I mean, very, it was very, very stressful, very difficult. Um, looking at it, like I mean, explained to me earlier on that, I mean, you have been used to something for so many years and uh week in week out i mean you go out except when you are on holidays i mean which is just like three uh three weeks uh or i mean during the off season you have holidays of i mean three weeks or four weeks at most and then um, you get back into your i mean uh activities again as a professional and all that you travel every weekend you go to camp you play football and everybody is watching you and all of a sudden I mean, you, I mean, that is not coming again and you have to be watching. I mean, it was something I very, very, very difficult, very difficult. Um, I just have to thank God that, I mean, I was able to get out of it. I almost, I mean, got into depression. I had, I mean, even had I mean, uh, high blood pressure <laughs> at that moment. And I mean, if not for my family that, I mean, really, I mean, helped and uh, uh, they were with me, supporting me and everything. I mean, it would have been worse to me than that. But uh, I thank God that, that, I mean, during my uh, playing days, I was doing so many things. I mean, I decide, like, I mean, the coaching courses and uh, because I was already preparing for the end of, I mean, uh, when I, I mean, retired from football preparing then I mean getting the I mean football administration courses and all the different courses while I was still a professional uh, footballer so when I finished though it was difficult like I said uh, difficult watching uh, your supposed I mean maybe teammates playing on TV and you at the weekends I mean get, being, being at home watching them and all that. I mean, they were very hard, hard to, to take, very difficult then. Uh, afterwards, I mean, when I did all this with the help of the fa my family and, uh, I mean, getting myself prepared and all that, so I got out of it and, I mean, I started doing something uh, meaningful that, I mean, will let me uh, forget about, I mean, what, I mean, has been happening. Although, even, that was, I mean, 2006, 2005, 2006, I mean, that I retired, I still feel, <laughs> although not like I mean before, but I mean, when I see, I mean, uh, players playing on the field, matches and all, I, I always even feel like, I mean, joining them and getting into the, onto the field and all that. I mean, that's, I mean, how very, very strong, I mean, it has been, but I mean, I thank God, I mean, that, I mean, at the moment, everything is going very fine. I'm doing something different doing i mean what i like i mean like uh, la liga ambassador as i mean uh, football administrator i mean some years back i when i got to nigeria i managed i mean shooting stars which i mean i did my best i mean i i tried everything possible to 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 make use of i mean the experience i got all over the years i mean to to put into uh football development in nigeria oh, okay so what exactly leads a professional act I was asking what exactly leads um, a retired professional athlete, you know, into, to spiral into depression once they leave their rigorous training? What actually leads um, professionals into, you know, just sliding into depression like that? Is there something that can be done to prevent it? Uh, yes, I mean, I think what I mean normally leads to to it, uh, to, to that, I mean, depression, after uh, retiring from an active, uh, I mean, sports. Um, you know, like I said earlier on, that's, well, whatever sport that you do is, I mean, like you are living a life which uh, you cherish and I mean, which you love and I mean, you are used to it. The week in, week out, day in, uh, day out, you are doing the same thing and I mean, you are loving it. All of a sudden, you are no more doing that and when you are not doing that all the glamour that is i mean sort that surrounds it i mean for example if it's a footballer and i mean you are always being healed i mean at, at the stadium when you go to 
uh, me to play. I mean, the fans and all that, everybody hailing you, even in the city, everybody asking for, I mean, uh, autographs and all that. Though you will still be that famous, I mean, everybody will know, but you will not be doing what you are used to again. Now you will be watching on TV or watching other people doing that same thing that you are doing. I mean, you are, you are used to that you have been doing. All those mm -hmm. things, I mean, I mean uh, lead to, oh, what am I going to do now? What is, I mean, is it I mean, that I'm doing now and all that? A lot of thoughts is going to come to your head. And if you don't have I mean, anything that you are going to fall back to, that you are going to do afterwards, I mean, it, it can lead to I mean, uh, depression. When you start thinking you will have enough time to stay at home, you will want to sleep sometimes you won't be able to sleep sometimes you won't be able to do i mean a lot of things so you will be thinking and all that you have time to think to think on i mean something not necessary and i mean things that are not even uh making sense and all that and all those things i mean can lead them into depression and i think i mean okay. that's the so reason why People that are not prepared. I mean, okay. That's why they. they, they, they so what you're they, saying. I mean, so what you're saying is. So what you're saying is, when an athlete is no longer very active, it gives room for a whole lot of things to, you know, filter yeah, into the mind. To filter into the mind, and I mean, a lot of things I mean coming into his head and all that. Then, uh, if as a, an, an athlete that I mean, well, you know, you get paid and all that. What you get paid. Once I mean you, you're no more. Uh, I mean playing. Yeah. The way the money is coming is not going to be coming again. Even if you have something that you are doing, probably if you have not invested or if you have, I mean, you don't have I mean, something that you're going to do afterwards and all that. The money will mm -hmm. not be coming the same way again. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so all so these things, I mean, uh, okay. Sorry? <laughs> I said, so it adds more pressure. That's what you're trying to more say. More pressure. Yes, more pressure. And uh, uh, what again? I think uh, all those things, all those things, I mean, I mean, leads to a bit depression. Uh, all right. All right. So um, Isabella says, um, would you say the depression has to do with pressure from friends, family, or media expectations? Um, well, it might not be pressure from friends. I mean, although, I mean, uh, if I mean it's somebody that is, I mean, from um, big family that, I mean, the family depends on, uh, on, on him and uh, probably friends who depend on him and uh, uh, things are not coming the way, and I mean, he's not being able to yeah. do yeah. the way he used to do. The pressure might come from there, but normally it shouldn't be. Which I mean, I I, I think everybody should know that. I mean, every everything has a limit, and there is the limit that I mean, one can go, and I mean, the person I mean, uh, they should just I mean, let the person be help him to get I mean, uh, um. Uh, engage with something and help him to in, uh, integrate him into the I mean, society. I mean, so that I mean, he will not be able to. I mean, uh, have all, all those semi depression. No, oh, all right. So, um, a question from Kinsley Momo. He said, "I will say thank God for your present situation since retirement, because many others were not as lucky or blessed." What advice would you give to present sportsmen who are still basking in the euphoria of active years? Well, uh, thank God, thank God for you too. I mean, I have to thank you uh, for 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 this. Um, well, the advice I'm, uh, I can always give I me mean, to the, uh, the present sportsmen is that I mean, when you are. Uh, at least, I mean, in the limelight, try as much yeah. as possible to do something uh, at the side. Try and invest. Try and, I mean, learn skills. Maybe okay. coaching courses, football administration courses. Well, I mean, I there understand. are so many, there are so many things, I mean, that, I mean, uh, one can do 
that I mean, I mean when you finish I mean, uh, your career, you can I mean go back to you have fall back to. So mm -hmm. should, I mean uh, try and uh, invest. Try and I mean have I mean, a good I mean I mean mindset and uh, try as much as possible to I mean, learn something so that I mean when you retire you have something that you are going to that is going to engage you that you are, you are going to be doing so that I mean you will not miss what I mean, you have been doing before. Yeah. So um now there have been issues of um athletes who have actually come out to talk about their depression. You know, it's not something that is common around um, our part here in Africa. So we've had um, a multiple Olympic um, uh, swimmer who had actually come out to talk about his battle with depression and also um, the um, uh, legendary boxer, Sugar Ray Leonard, who has actually, you know, documented his you know, um, struggle with depression. It's even had to make a certain kind of, you know, come back over the years. It's had to come back. And he even went at some point to say that life for him outside the ring is not it at all because to him, his identity is when, um, you know, the hands are raised, you've won, and, you know, over 50,000 people are cheering on. I mean, the excitement, you know, the, the, the chair, the cloud, and the claps and all that. So, I mean, getting out of all that and then coming into um, an ordinary lifestyle, you know, something that you are not used to, those chairs are not there, the adrenaline rush is not there, the buzz is not there anymore. And, you know, they have to deal with identity, um, you know, they have to deal with identity, you know, shift and all that. How can athletes actually transition from that aspect, you know, to this um, normal daily life routine? How can they make that transition without losing themselves, without having a mental breakdown? Uh, you know, if you remember that, I mean, I mentioned it, I mean, <laughs> before, you know, I mean, all these things, it's, I mean, what I mean, leads to uh, I mean, depression. The, uh, you are on the field, everybody cheering you. Even, uh, I mean, uh, in the city, everybody, I mean, asking for autographs and all that. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> and that is not, I mean, coming back again. Um, I think, I mean, it's what I mean, I've just, I mean, said. You have to, I mean, at least, I mean, uh, if you cannot undo it alone, you have to talk to people, talk to psychologists, uh, people that, I mean, are very, I mean, uh, that will talk you out of it. I mean, talk to your family, get engaged, I mean, with something and uh, confide in them, I mean, uh, good friends and, I mean, family and all that so that, I mean, you can get out of, I mean, the, this, uh, this, because, I mean, it's not easy, like I said, it's not easy for you to be, I mean, for people cheering you all over, the years and all that then i mean for a footballer i mean you, you are used to scoring goals and everybody i mean happy you're used to i mean winning trophies you're used to so many things and i mean yeah. <laughs> it's not no more coming so it's yeah, very, sure. very 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 difficult so you just have to have I mean, uh confide in people try and talk i mean to i mean to people so that i mean they can at least i mean engage you uh, engage yourself, I mean, with something meaningful, something, I mean, good to do so that, I mean, you can I mean, have, uh, 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 I mean, come out of, I mean, whatever depression that, I mean, you might, I mean, be. Yeah, yeah, okay. So now you apply most of your international trade in Spain, right? Now, in that yeah. client, we have a structure you know, where these things are actually put in place. Even with that, people still go ahead to, you know, um, um, use drugs and all that there's a lot of substance abuse because some people just spiral into you know the drug abuse and even go as much as you know taking their own lives because they can't actually deal with the difference you know anymore over here um we don't talk about this as much do you think we have um a structure here is there is there anything that is being done to that regard to help young athletes to be able to deal with these challenges, you know, um, this um, stress, this mental breakdown, the depression at the end of the day, because it's not a conversation that anybody will want to, you know, they're they open to have because of the stigma 
of you know the breakdown because most times there's a, a label to it you're a weakling are you the only one that mm. applied you know practice this sport other people did it and they came out why are people not having this conversation why are people not talking about their struggles freely why are athletes still hiding it as if it doesn't exist well i think i mean it's just i mean uh ways uh and uh, the mindsets and uh the culture and everything in in, in nigeria that i mean is making all these things mm -hmm. i mean to to happen um we should open up i mean we should try as much as possible to know that i mean a lot of things i mean can happen and uh, how to find solution to it is i mean what we have to i know we don't have i mean enough i mean facilities I mean to to fight and uh, to I mean to to to, to guide against I mean this. We don't have I mean enough people too, psychologists I mean, that 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 I mean can uh, talk to people that are having all these problems. I know that I mean we don't have it because I mean you, you talk about I mean people thinking that you are a weakling and all that. Nobody is a weakling. Um, anything that happens, I mean uh, one needs to talk about it. You have to be open and you don't have to have any shame in talking about I mean, what problems you have and that's the reason why all the uh, things uh, happen to us and I mean we don't have any solution to it so I don't think we have I any mean, enough facilities in Nigeria I just I mean, hope that I mean I mean the, the authority will be able to I mean recognize and I mean uh, know that I mean all these things are happening and I mean uh, find a way of I mean putting them in facilities on ground so that I mean we can guide against all these things. Hmm. Yeah. So um Isabel says away from the topic, uh, Mr. Mutir, um, you were nicknamed the headmaster. Your goals during your playing mm -hmm. days were headers. Do you teach people how to score accurately with the head? You mean I mean at the moment <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, I'm not in any team uh, club or anything now, and I mean nobody has, I mean, <laughs> really uh, contacted me. I mean, to do such a thing, but I mean the the fact is, I mean, it still remains that I mean, if I have any opportunity or any player that I mean I have opportunity of talking to or training with and all that, I I, I normally give them I mean tips and all that. So I believe, I mean, all these things, I mean, have to come I mean, from people that want to, to learn. I mean, any player, I'm open to anybody or any player that needs uh, uh, information about it or any anybody that wants me to teach him or, or, or I mean, I'm open to any uh, anything, I mean, like that. I mean, everything, I mean, uh, like that. All right. So Kingsley Mama says, Tell us about your hey days with the Super Eagles. Was there any special training you were taking to be the headmaster? <laughs> well, not I mean, not really. I didn't have any special training, and I mean, no coach has ever uh, called me to teach me how to use the head or how to score goals. I mean, with the head, I something that I mean was I mean in in Bonn. Uh, that I mean, I got used to, and I realized, and uh, uh, from very, very young, and uh, even when I was in I mean, primary school, uh, I mean, they used to call me coconut head then, and uh, just head. growing up, coconut. Now you, you, you know what I mean? Ah. Coconut is. <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what coconut is because during yeah, that period. Okay. No matter how hard the, the ball is, I mean, I would jump and I mean, while all my other uh, teammates, while they were dodging, you know, the balls mm -hmm. then used to be very, very hard. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they would just, I mean, be dodging and all that. But I would be the only person that, I mean, would jump and I mean, hit the ball and all that. So that was when they gave me, gave me that, I mean, uh, nickname. But I mean, as time mm -hmm. goes on, I realized that I mean I had that uh, uh, talent. I had that, so I continue working on it. I mean, uh, on on the field on my own, and I mean trying to. And I mean it's not as if I mean I was having any special uh, uh, 
training or special uh, thing with, with any coach. All the coaches that I've had, they realized when I'm in the team that I mean I had this talent and I mean they try as much as possible to uh, make use of it and I mean their tactics and everything. I mean, balls coming from the wings, and I mean, they know that, I mean, if the pull-out comes and all that. So they always, I mean, adapt me into uh, or adapt the system into what I uh, have. And I mean, that's, I mean, the reason why I've been able to, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, score goals, I mean, with the uh, all right. So um, a question here from my text says, um, in one of your interviews, you said you earned 400 naira as your first salary when you were playing with Ferry Scorpio. Now, how did you cope with this, considering the many responsibilities of footballers? Um, well, I mean, firstly, 400 naira, that period, I will tell you the year. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in 1985. 1986. Mm. I got to Femo Scorpion. Uh, I mean, after the National Sports Festival, the owner of I mean, Femo okay. Scorpion, Chief I mean, uh, uh, came to the National Sports Festival. I mean, they detected me, and uh, after the sports festival, he just called me and uh, signed me into his club. So that period, 400 naira was, I mean, uh, not too huge but i mean it was something i was in school mm -hmm. then and i mean in uh, i got admission that year into the uh, mm. I, mean, I mean university and uh, i was able to uh, keep till the end of the month which i mean that's amount of money i will buy clothes i will uh, eat three square meal you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even, I mean, take money home and even save, save some money. And I mean, you know, so. Wow, you could still pay for 400. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I'm telling you, <laughs> it might be nothing now, but then it was, I mean, I mean, big, uh, well, it was something in which a, a, a guy that, I mean, wants to, I mean, live, I mean, normally and all that, I mean, could live. And I mean, I even helped, I mean, some people. Uh, some students, I mean, uh, classmates and all that, I mean, during that period, you know, you take them out to, to eat and all that. So it was, I mean, a huge amount of, I mean, well, I mean, good money then. And uh, the, a year after, uh, it was increased to 450 Naira. Wow. So let me even uh, tell you, when I got to Shooting Stars in uh, 1988, the money was, I mean, I was earning was, I mean, 500, 550 uh, naira and then I mean, 500 naira as, I mean, the sign on fee. In 1988, that I signed for, I mean, that was in 1988 in Shooting Stars. In uh, Julius Baga, in 1989, where after the Saudi 89, when I signed for Julius Baga, I was earning uh, 1,000 naira then, and my sign on fee was, I mean, another 1,000 Naira, you know, so, and uh, I mean, when I traveled to Spain, my ticket was 400 and, uh, I mean, sorry, 4,000 Naira, the ticket that took me to Spain when I first, I mean, the, I mean Iberia, Iberia uh, airline was 4,500 uh, Naira, so th that was, I mean, no. how things were then. So yeah. you don't look at yeah, it the way you are looking I'm at the money now. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy you just said that was how things were then because right now we find it uh, difficult to even know about how much players earn. You know, sometimes, you know, most times these things are not even disclosed. You know, they just send them on. We don't know who's signing who. Is it that you're go always going on loan? I mean, this figures, we don't even know. I mean, if there's, there's a transfer happening in Europe, we know how much a player is being signed for. We know yeah. um, if, if the person is going to loan at what price and all that. But over here, we don't have those records. What 
was done then and you know uh, that was different from what is happening now what should be done in, in that regard actually <clears throat> excuse me i think um we have to be that transparent i mean you know everything in nigeria uh the way things uh, are the way people the mindset, I mean, the perception, and I mean, the way you, I mean, they always do things. I mean, there shouldn't be anything hidden. Everything is transparent. Uh, I mean, in Europe, when when you're talking about uh, 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 what players earn, and I mean, what uh, players yeah. I mean they sign and all that. But I mean, all those things are, are not in Nigeria. We have to change our mindset. We have to change our ways, and make things I mean transparent in Nigeria. Um, uh, I didn't have any problem in, 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 in saying all this during our time too. I mean, things were, I mean, transparent, I mean, open, although not as open as, I mean, it's, I mean it is in Nero, but I mean, I think, uh, we always, I mean, do things in, and I mean, without being, being transparent, that's the reason why, and I, uh, we have to start i mean being transparent and do do things i mean professionally i mean i mean the, the club size yeah. in, uh, in nigeria yeah i think we're not actually looking at that as professionalism because that is one of the things that actually entails now kinsley says um during your time um in the super eagles okay it, during your time in the super eagles there was a story of mafias um <laughs> was there really um, a mafia in the ego as if there was how did you flow along because you were a regular of that team <laughs> well uh, as I mean he, he said maybe I wasn't aware that I mean there was I mean, a mafia so maybe that was the I mean why I was able to <laughs> to flow along <laughs> because I mean I <laughs> used to hear people saying talking about mafia and mafia and all that and I was never a mafia, and I mean, nothing really happened I mean, to me when I was in the team. All I was, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean concerned about was coming to play for Nigeria, do my things, and get back to my club because I mean, I have responsibility both for Nigeria and I mean, for my club. So when I come to Nigeria, I face what I do play train play for nigeria and do everything as a professional as i mean uh, listen without any scandal without anything then get back to my club i mean at i mean uh, the particular time that i have to uh, that i had mm. to get back to my club without i mean getting late and all that and nobody has ever faulted me or punished me or do anything i mean uh, in my club so i always i mean do my things how i mean the way it's supposed to be done and uh, i was never aware of I mean, any mafia maybe i, I was the <laughs> chief of I mean, the mafians <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> nothing, okay, nothing so I mean, ever done. happened to me okay. and uh, i never had any any problem with okay. any, anybody <laughs> okay so kinsley says what would you describe as your high point in football and perhaps any dream not fulfilled in football well, I, I think, I mean, every moment, I mean, uh, during my playing days, I mean, was high point for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, in life, I mean, you might have, I mean, uh, sometimes, I mean, things, I mean, will not work, I mean, very well, and I mean, the way you wanted it to be, but I mean, I always uh, struggle, I always, I mean, strive hard to make sure that, I mean, I'm, I mean, relevant, I always, I mean, train very hard to make sure that i mean i, I mean picked and i may mean, play regularly in the team and uh, there are some uh, periods in which uh, i was not playing regularly i would be on the bench but i never because of that i mean lose i mean uh, concentration or lose I any mean, focus or uh be i mean got to be demoralized I and mean, i always I me mean, work very hard if i'm not doing things i mean uh, or i didn't do things i mean well today I try to work hard to make sure that I mean I improve on, uh, on myself on needs and all that. So I believe I mean during the period uh, between uh, ninety four and ninety eight, I mean they were I mean, very very yeah. I mean high points and I mean uh, good I mean, period for me in the in the national team. And uh, I will even talk about I mean the. Uh, 
92 uh, Nations Cup, which I mean, we I had I mean I mean very good uh, uh, good I mean uh, beginning into the into the national team that uh, that period too. All right. So, um, Blessing says, in Nigeria especially, issues of depression, anxiety, and mental health are not taken too seriously. Many even make jokes out of it. How do you... Yeah, I know you talked a little bit about this. I think she's just coming on late. Um, but you can still, you know, just try a little bit more light so that for those that are just joining us right now can also hear, you know, what you have to say about this question. Well, uh, talking about I mean, the depression, anxiety, and mental health, how do we, I mean, what, what I would suggest we handle such uh, issues? I mean, yeah, like I said earlier on, that I mean, uh, we have a mindset in Nigeria that I mean, and all that. And uh, like I said, nobody is uh, a weakling. Anything can happen to anybody, uh, yeah. depending on how, I mean, big or how hard that thing is and I mean it can affect anybody uh, mentally and uh, we just have to uh, come out and talk about it whoever that thing is happening to should come about yeah. I mean come out and talk talk to people talk to your family talk to if you can't talk to your family get uh, a psychologist just talk about it make sure that I mean you are being advised I mean correctly and um find a solution to the problem that you are having it might be financial problem that is making somebody to get I me mean, into depression and the way i mean economy is in nigeria now i mean uh, all these things i mean uh, uh, is bound to happen and uh, even the security system i mean the way nigeria is i mean generally so the authority should come out and i mean make sure that i mean they get uh people that are very i mean professional in this and i mean make people talk about it and i mean people should not stigmatize i mean the uh, the people that have I mean, mental or uh, I mean, mental health I mean, problem and all that so that i mean they can get out of it on time hmm. so kingsley says you spoke about your family playing a big part in saving you from depression. Do footballers have time for their families considering their um, tight routine? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, I mean, family is very, very important. And uh, footballers will should. I don't know about I mean, uh, other people, but during my time, I have time for my family. I mean, family is I mean, always I mean, the uh, number one for me yeah i was i mean a professional i go and my family understand that i mean i have to travel i have to go but when i'm not traveling or when i'm home i'm always with my family and i mean we always do things i mean together go i mean uh, places together watch i mean movie uh, when i mean i'm off and all that so i always I mean, put I me mean, family uh, as I mean, the most important i mean uh, me yes when i'm away they always miss me but i mean i make up when i'm back home for what we have missed I mean. so every footballer nobody should just uh, give excuses that i mean you don't have I any mean, uh, time for the family and all that family will understand we always understand i mean your job what you do and uh, when you are away I mean, they will understand. But when you are home, you should always make up for I mean, the time lost when you were away with the family. All right. So this is coming from um, Henry Wafada. He says, hi, me too. You are a great hero in Spain and also a great leader. You have been flying so many young players positively. I had lived in Madrid, Spain for years, and everyone's still saying so many good things about you. Do you have plans to coach any football club in Europe or sometime to be a Nigerian national team coach? <laughs> well, thank you for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
like uh, you said uh, in the beginning, I have a uh, Wafer Pro license in which every three, three years, I mean, we, I, I do the, uh, I mean, renew it every three, three years. But uh, I don't know if uh, the opportunity is going to come. I, I hope that one day the opportunity will come for me to, I mean, coach any, any, any club or the national team. I hope I mean uh, the opportunity will come one day. But I mean, what I'm doing at the moment, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being, I mean, uh, in football, uh, although not as a coach. But I mean, I wouldn't mind one of these days. I mean, if I can uh, get to coach I mean, any club, either in Europe or in Nigeria, I wouldn't mind to be able to have I mean that opportunity of doing that. Okay, so um, this one comes from oh, um, Anito. He says, how did it feel the first time you realized that you are not going to play professional football again? Any shock or major adjustments? Yeah, um, actually, it wasn't any shock, but I mean, it was I mean, very, very sad when uh, I had to leave I mean, football. Uh, I left football uh, when I could still continue playing, but because of I mean uh, constant uh, injury, because I mean I've had uh, operation uh, during uh, my active days. So towards the end, I was I mean having uh, uh, I mean the injury keep coming and all that. So uh, when I decided. Though I have been, I mean, at least I mean, uh, preparing, trying to think about, I mean, what was going to happen then when I leave football and all that, and uh, it wasn't as shocking as I mean one would expect, but it was I mean, very very sad uh, moment, hmm. very sad moment then, and um, I just I mean had to some of courage and uh, get out of it. I mean, like I said, I mean with the help of I mean the family and everybody, uh, I got out of it and I mean started doing things I mean meaningful like uh, having uh, the uh, football administration I mean courses. I already had uh, the coaching course uh, during my I mean playing days, so I just had to do uh, something I mean meaningful. Yeah. Okay. So, how would you advise sports, you know, sportsmen to, you know, to transition into the regular um, lifestyle? How would you advise them? Because, um, you know, just when you stop, like you said, um, like I need to ask if there was any form of shock. When you stop, of course, there's something there that you just didn't realize something has changed, and sometimes this actually leads to you know, um, loss of identity, where people will probably lose their self-worth. How would you um, advise sportsmen to transition into normal life, you know, daily life routine, you know, without, you know, that breakdown at the back of their mind? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, for the uh, guys, for the, for the players, I mean, that are still active now, they should know, they should have it at the back of their mind uh, that at the end, uh, sooner or later, football is going to end. They should know that. They all already know that. Uh, you can't I mean, play uh, football for long. And I mean, when you're getting into 38, well, 35, let me say, that there are some players that, I mean, retired uh, at 33, 32, maybe because of injury and all that. And uh, during this period, I mean, nowadays, I mean, a player can still go 35, 38, depending on, on how they are, uh, I mean, managing and uh, keeping the, uh, their selves, I mean, at the moment. Uh, they should have it at the back of their mind that I mean, football is going to end one day, and they will retire from playing active football. So they would, mm-hmm. should be getting prepared for it. They should have I mean, a positive mindset about it. At first, like I said earlier, they should at least I mean, try and invest in something which is I mean, going to 
I mean, at least I mean, give them I mean, uh, the earnings. I mean, at the end, uh, after, then they should have I mean something that I mean they are doing maybe a skill that I mean uh, coaching courses, football administration courses, and all this. That I mean they can get into it immediately after they I mean end football, and uh, also they should I mean just I mean get engaged with I mean I mean some other things too. So that when they leave football, they will not feel uh, the, the 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 pains. They will not. Uh, I mean, it, it is not going to be uh, shocking to them. Again, positive oh. mindset. They should have it. I mean, at the back of their mind that I mean they are going to leave I mean, football one day, and they should invest. And at the end of the day, they should know. I mean, do something meaningful. I mean, I mean that I mean is going to uh, keep them. I mean, from thinking about I mean, that. So those are the things. I mean, that I think I mean they can do. All right, all right, okay. So um, now you've been a La Liga uh, ambassador for a couple of years now. Um, can you tell us mm. how that partnership has actually propelled grassroots football in Nigeria? Well, uh, the partnership with La Liga has I mean, really uh, done greatly for Nigerian I mean, football I mean, in terms of I mean, the grass, grassroots I mean, development. Um, the partnership I mean, started with MPFL uh, in uh, 2016, and I've been part and parcel of it, and I mean, I've seen uh, we have developed a lot of things, and I mean, we have been bringing La Liga has been bringing uh, coaches to Nigeria every year to come and coach. Uh, I mean, give a uh, lecture to youth coaches, and I mean, we have been uh, playing. I mean, organizing uh, under fifteen tournaments for the NPFL clubs under fifteen tournaments, in which I mean, we have seen so many players playing the under seventeen. Uh, uh last under 17 for nigeria so a lot of things has been happening and i mean some players have, have even traveled that have participated have even traveled to europe to go and play uh, uh i mean i mean football and we have seen that i mean with the partnership many nigerian players playing in europe have i mean been playing in i mean in la liga in which i mean it has i mean at least i mean make uh nigerian players and nigerian football known to spanish uh, uh, clubs so a whole lot of things and there are a whole lot of things that is i mean is still in the kitty that i mean uh, is still going to come i mean as time goes on yeah 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 all right so um blessing says experience has shown that most ex-stars aren't being treated properly, especially after leaving the field. As an ex-player, do you agree with that? And what will you advise the government to do better on this on this issue? Um, well, uh, if we are looking at it all in, in one way, we we'll say that, I mean, probably uh, what I mean, is being done to ex semi players are uh, not good or whatever and all that. I will always I mean, talk about uh, structure that we did not have. We didn't have I any mean, structure, no pension for footballers. And uh, if you play football, you know that I mean, you're just I mean, doing it for yourself. It's whatever you get now. Afterwards, I mean, there's no pension for you, nothing, no reward, I and mean, I mean, much reward and all that. The reward that we used to have is, I mean, maybe when we, we I mean, one uh, something and I mean, the government gives, I mean, maybe houses, lands and all that, or uh, the monetary value and all that. And uh, I think, I mean, what we just have to do now is, I mean, thinking of, I mean, restructuring having good structure that is going to give uh, players like i mean pension in which i mean after leaving football they will be able to uh, I mean, open to pension they will be open to i mean some other things i mean that will keep i mean their, their life i mean going 
And that is, I mean, what I just think, I mean, we have to do, the government have to try as much as possible and let I me mean, establish, I mean, that. Right. I know you've talked about um, uh, the fact that um, we sh the, uh, all players should actually be taken um, care of. And also, you've also spoke about the importance of um, people speaking up, you know, speaking up about the way they feel, their mental health, depression, and the, the issue should be taken seriously. Now, I want to ask, as a next international, is there, um, you know, has this discussion ever cropped up amongst you and your peers? Has it ever been something that you've actually visited, you know, to discuss and see how you can actually do something about it, you know, to drive the conversation? Yes. Um, well, I might not be personally and uh, just I mean directly with them I in uh, with uh, uh, ex I mean, teammates, but I mean there are so many of us ex team uh, ex footballers that we are in the union uh, professional football association of Nigeria. That's I mean the PIFAN, and uh, PIFAN is trying as much as possible to do something. Uh, so that I mean, the authority, the NFL, I mean, the government, and all that, they can establish I mean, something uh, that is going to be beneficial for both I mean, the players now that I mean, are active now and uh, till when they, they retire from I mean, playing football and I mean, for I mean, ex I mean, footballers too. So, in the level of I mean, the PFAN, I mean, things have been done, and uh, I just uh, hope. That I mean, uh, we are going to get I mean everything right, and uh, things I mean are going to change, I mean very soon. What would be your suggestion? What would be your suggestion on how to, on how best to discuss these things? Because it shouldn't be um, talked about in the elite um, space alone. Um, it should be conversations that probably should be had even at the grassroots level, so that athletes are actually sensitized from, you know, when they're starting their careers and all that. How do you think the government can actually, you know, um, implement this? How do you think this can actually be possible? Um, well, like I said, uh, now that I'm in PIFAN, uh, that's, I mean, the, the union that is I mean, responsible for the uh, welfare and uh, that is fighting for uh, the, the players. And it's called I mean, Professional uh, Football Association of uh, I mean uh, Nigeria, PIFAN. Mm -hmm. So there is the union that is fighting, that is doing everything to make I mean uh, government to make I mean policy and all that that is going to help play I mean footballers. So they are in that level they are i mean doing things i mean uh, in that aspect i mean with the nff talking to the nff and i mean even talking to the government and uh, so that i mean they can establish i mean a lot of things that is going to be beneficial for the i mean players footballers mm. all right so i know that you are right now the um, La Liga ambassador, so I would like to ask, is there any plan of taking on any major project anytime soon? I don't understand. A uh, major project like... Uh, I said... What? Okay, I said... I know you talked... Uh, you said earlier that, uh, yeah, you right now you're still the La Liga ambassador, that you're still looking at, you know, opportunities, you know, um, in coaching, if it comes in the nearest future. Now, the nearest future, could be five years, four years, three years. If anything major, you know, comes along within this space of time, would you, you know, be open to um, that? Will you be open to taking any opportunity that comes to you very soon? Yes, I mean, uh, of course, I mean, uh, we have to study, I mean, that uh, opportunity and I mean, what, I mean, it is going to be and all that, I have to look at it. If it's going to be a good one, and I mean that it's going to be, uh, I mean, uh, fruitful, beneficial. I mean, yes, of course. I mean, I, I can take it. All right. So, um, someone just sent a message. What was your 
most memorable time while you were playing football? What was your most memorable time? Well, there are so many uh, memorable times. I mean, let me just start from, I mean, from uh, uh, Saudi 89, the miracle of I mean, the mom. I don't know if you are aware of that or the person that asked the question, if he's uh, aware of uh, the miracle of the mom. That was uh, in Saudi 89 when we uh, uh, were losing, I mean, 4 0 and uh, we, we equalized and uh, came back 4-4, and then we eventually won the game. And that was the quarterfinal of the World Cup, under-20 World Cup, uh, which uh, eventually we got to the final, uh, but lost in the final to Portugal. Then um, uh, another memorable moment was uh, when we won the AFCON in 1994, and uh, we qualified that same year for the World Cup for the first time for Nigeria for the first time in history. Uh, the 94 World Cup was, I mean, the Nigerian participation for the first time in the, in the World Cup, and I was uh, part of I mean, that uh, team that qualified Nigeria. And it was, I mean, uh, awesome. It was a memorable uh, moment. And uh, 98 too, France 98, though we didn't go beyond uh, the, yeah, we qualified for the second round, but we didn't uh, get into the quarterfinal, which, I mean, was what we wanted. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, uh, those moments were memorable for me. All right. So um, I got a message here saying, so um, that it is common with um, athletes that have retired to be obese. They probably put on weight and a whole lot of things. And that also can lead to you know, um, depression because they they tend to focus on food. They don't watch their diet <laughs> anymore. So I said, did you have that kind of experience? Because somehow you've been, you've somehow managed to keep fit over the years. And what have you been doing to keep fit? You know, just remain well, in the same um, frame. <laughs> Um, I would rather say that I mean it's not only uh, ex footballer or footballer that I mean should watch uh, what they eat after football. Everybody, everybody should I mean try and uh, uh, make sure that I mean they uh, keep fit because uh, you know keeping fit is is very very good and it's I mean beneficial to health uh, to healthy living and. Um, well, I try as much as possible. I don't think uh, since I left football, I've uh, gained more than five kilos <laughs> because I was I mean, weighing 76 and uh, um, weighing 81, 82 at the moment. So I try that as much as possible. Even if I'm not uh, playing football, I try to jog, I try to go to gym. Uh, just, I mean, then I watch what I eat. I drink I mean, lots of water and uh, I mean, do just, I mean, eat uh, healthy. So, and uh, that's, I mean, okay. the reason why. So, <laughs> um, okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. So, um, let me ask uh, for the benefit of those that are saying, um, what kind of um, routine, what kind of routine, what do you want to do? Yes, for some of you that are joining now, I request the messages I'm seeing. Yes, um, Mr. Tui have actually talked about um, keeping uh, feet, talking about your problems so that you don't slip into depression. He's also said that for him, that his family played a very vital role, you know, and that family is number one. The family is very, very important that even though you are a player, an elite player, that you don't put your family aside because you need them at every point in time, at every point in your career. They are the backbone. He said a whole lot of things. He also made mention of um, how he had to, you know, um, spend a certain amount of money. Yes, he told us that he his first salary was um, 400 naira which eventually went from 450 to 500. He talked about the importance of um, transparency when it comes to, do, uh, to transfers, you know, in our leads. Because that is part of professionalism. He said a whole lot. In case you're just joining, 
us right now. We're about to wrap up. So now, before we go, um, Sam, to you, are there things that you would like to say? What are the things you would like to say to, you know, young um, footballers that, you know, are coming into the space who don't understand that depression is something that can happen to just anybody? What? How would you advise them to deal with it? What are the things that they should learn to do so that they don't, you know, have a mental breakdown. If for let's say, for instance, maybe they had injury, like you said, you still had time to play because, uh, but you couldn't continue because you kept having, you know, constant injury. So you were forced to retire. Now, for some athletes who are not mentally prepared for this, it comes to them, you know, as a, some sort of frustration, which can lead to a mental breakdown, which sometimes leads to drug abuse, you know, substance abuse, and sadly sometimes um loss of life as they tend to take their lives how what will you say to you know young athletes that are you know coming into this space that are exposed to so many things i mean we know there's a whole lot happening out there right now substance can be you know um gotten very cheap you know right now and all that so what will you say to them and how should they go about their career <coughs> excuse me yeah, um, firstly, I want them to realize that, um, yeah, because I know a lot of, I mean, I mean a lot of I mean, uh, kids nowadays, they want to be Maradona, I mean, uh, Ronaldo, Messi, they just want to play football, they want to get known, they want to make them I mean, a football career and all that. Yeah, it is possible. And... Uh, I want to let them know that I mean it's not everybody that can make it to the level that I mean they mm -hmm. expected, because there are so many things that I mean are attached to it for you to get to the highest level. Discipline is very very important if you want to get I mean, to the highest level. I mean you must I mean be careful. You must have um, I mean everything that it takes for you to be a professional. Then aside that. Like I said, discipline, de dedication, determination. Then when you get to the highest level, maintaining yourself in the highest level too is I mean, a very, very difficult task. Because young people, when the money starts coming in, when the money starts I mean, coming in, I mean, they tend to change. They tend to think that, I mean, that's the way everything is going to be. And... They change their ways, and I mean, they start. I mean, uh, doing. I mean, I mean, lot of things. I mean, rubbish, uh, indiscipline, and everything. They will believe that. I mean, they have. I mean, got into the highest uh, of their career and all that. So all these things. At the end of the day, if you are not disciplined, and you are dropped from the team, money is not coming, and all mm -hmm. this. All these things, I mean, I can, I mean, leads to depression too. Or you are not playing very well. You are not, I mean, training very well. You know that, I mean, yeah. probably when you sign a contract is just, I mean, three years or five years or whatever, and that period is going to end. So you must know that, I mean, the discipline, the de determination, dedication, you must be at the highest level at every given time, because if not, your contract might not be renewed. Then if you are not renewed the contract and you can't get them in I mean, another club, that might lead to depression too. That what am I going to do? Am I going back to Nigeria? No, that they should have I mean, that in mind too. Then yeah. when they are getting to the end of their careers, like I said, they must I may be prepared for it. And all that. So, I think uh, I mean all these things. I mean, should should help them to get them I mean, uh, them into the. Uh, in, I mean, get them prepared for whatever that might come. And I will still repeat it. It is not everybody that will get to the highest level that will get to the. I mean. Uh, I mean to to the to the. I mean, zenith to the to the highest I mean, level. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know if I mean you you understand I mean, uh, everything that I've been saying since. Yeah, for sure we do. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so so much, Mr. Mutiadi, for you for coming on Itoro's Hub today. Now, before you go, I would like I do to all my guests. I would uh, give you a few seconds to you know give a shout out. You know, say hello to whoever. Just say something. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody for uh, watching this, for being in uh, Itero Sami Hub and uh, I mean, following us and then I mean, watching this uh, program. And uh, thank you very much. I mean, it's my pleasure to be with you and uh, to share my ideas and uh, uh, experience I mean, that I mean, I've had over, over the years, I mean, with you. Um, anytime you call, I'll be, I'll be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Like I said earlier when we started the show, that with you, there's always, you know, he's always giving us something to talk about. Now today, you've told us um, from the questions that a whole lot of things happened, how you got your name, and a whole lot of things. Not people didn't know how or when the name, um, <laughs> where the name headmaster came yeah. from. Now they know. So <laughs> I think they'll, they'll raise the case <laughs> now. So um, a whole lot, um, okay, Kingsley says, insightful interview, best wishes. Thank you, Kingsley. Thank, Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Thank you, Blessing. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Harry Wafada. Thank you, all of you. I say a big thank you for staying with us. Even when there was that horrible, 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 horrible um, disconnection, you still stop, yeah, with me. Thank you so much for staying with us. Don't forget, you can still watch the, uh, for the full interview on my page, and I'm still going to edit this and put it on my YouTube page as well, Itero's Hawk. So thank you so, so, so much for uh, being with us today on the show. Mr. Mupi, thank you so much for being my guest. I really, really yeah, appreciate you taking out time and missing your busy schedule to um, come to be with me today in the house. Thank you so much, and bye for now. Bye. Bye. Yeah.